Hi guys and welcome to today's video which will be all about how to make your crested gecko love you. Now I did a similar video for leopard geckos a while ago and some people got kind of annoyed. They said geckos can't love you, they can't be tamed. Now technically, technically this is probably true. Regardless, <laughs> if you want to know how to bond with your gecko and allow them to trust you a little more then this is a video for you. So let's start off with the first tip. Firstly, you want to make sure your crested gecko setup is correct. You want plenty of places to climb and hide. Now, it may not seem great as an owner to not be able to see your gecko all of the time, but these hiding spots allow your gecko to feel safe and secure in its home. A few spots we have in Lyra's tank include this massive planter, which you can literally get inside of, her coconut hide, her snake plant, and right down here, there's another little hide built into the background. As well as these hides, we of course have vines and branches and plants so she can feel nice and comfortable in her enclosure so if she ever feels stressed and wants to hide, she easily can. There are various ways to achieve this so don't feel you have to do the exact same as me but having a happy gecko who isn't always on edge really helps with the taming process. The next step is to create a familiar sound or say their name or even both. Now when I said this step in the leopard gecko taming video, someone said reptiles can't hear because snakes can't hear or something like that, I don't know what she was on about, but since geckos have vocal cords, therefore they use sound to communicate sometimes and they have ears, um, I think they do respond to sounds. But unlike leopard geckos, I feel this takes a lot longer with crested geckos and you have to be quite consistent with it. So with all my pets, you may know I make the sound like they just know that's me that's just my sound I do it with every kind of pet I have and I also say their names too I will say Lyra's name especially when I'm offering her food because I feel this allows her to connect her name or the sound of her name to a positive experience Lyra oh now I've had her quite a while now and I'll probably say it's only in the last year that she's actively been coming out and seeing me when I'm preparing her food or I'm just sat by her tank doors talking to her. So this is really something you need to stick with and I think it does eventually pay off after maybe like a couple years. But in the grand scheme of things, crested geckos can live 20 years or more so putting in that effort at the start can really help in the long run. The next step you can try is hand feeding, though not too much as this in itself can become a problem. I've done a video on how to get your crested gecko to eat on their own, so if this is a problem you have, make sure you check that out. However, whenever I'm making up Lyra's food, I always use a blunt bamboo skewer to mix it up. So as I'm putting it in, I will let her lick it off the end of the bamboo skewer, though sometimes she will launch at it. Anyway, by doing this, Lyra associates good things such as food with my presence. So I can sit there, give her food that she loves, and every time I go sit by her tank, she'll start to learn it means good things. The fourth tip is correct handling. It's good to understand how to pick up your gecko. I think this can be trickier if you have particularly big hands and a baby crusty. But this is how I like to pick up Lyra in her tank. Now it doesn't always go smoothly and sometimes she'll jump away or run away and I don't take it personal, I, I'm just like okay fair enough she doesn't want to come out today. And I think it is good to try not to take any of this personally because I do see people say my gecko hates me because it keeps jumping away. Please don't think like that, please be positive and look from your gecko's perspective, try to imagine being that gecko. In the wild it could be preyed on, I think lychees eat them in the wild, like they are a prey animal in the wild and we are big scary warm things. <laughs> so you've got to understand we come across kind of scary at them, so we need to build that trust. There are various ways a gecko will react depending on how we hold them and the position of our hand or our arm. For example, I call this one the human branch. So if I put my arm out straight, most likely Lyra will run straight up it. Now on this occasion, Lyra had just woken up so she is a little bit slower, but if this was a little bit later and she was a bit more awake, she would have ran straight up my arm. Of course, I also jump hand to hand and also try to jump on your camera. Yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> they really like tripods as well. And also don't be put off if your gecko is quick or is jumpy because this is in their nature. It's totally fine. And actually it's really good to have a well energized gecko. There's nothing bad about that at all. If you have a lethargic gecko, that is not great. Also be aware they may also poop on you a lot. Yeah, 
that that happens. I did a video about the differences in handling a leopard gecko, crested gecko and chihua, so check that out if you like. Another thing with handling, handle them lower to the floor or sat down or on your bed or a seat, especially if you're not used to handling them, so if they do jump, they don't fall far or they just don't fall at all. Also do not handle them around other animals such as cats and dogs. Also make sure you're handling them in the evening and not during the day as they should be sleeping. And the final tip is to be consistent, especially with handling. Now of course you don't want to stress out your gecko and if it's new I'd only suggest handling it for short periods of time at first. But if you are in the process of taming and you do it once a week, it's going to take forever. So I would suggest doing it daily. I find if you leave your crested gecko for a long time without handling, even if it's fairly tame, the next time you go to handle it, it's gonna be a bit more skittish. I don't know why this just kind of happens. So consistency is quite important with crested geckos. And prior to getting a crested gecko myself, there weren't that many videos on YouTube of crested geckos other than breeders or people with quite large reptile collections shall we say and they obviously didn't handle their crested geckos that consistently so they always seem very skittish so in my own experience i have found that if you handle them correctly and you are consistent you get really good results Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Our patron of the day is Jennifer, and if you didn't know, once someone has been a patron for a year, I will feature them on here, depending on their tier. D did that rhyme? I think that rhymed. Anyway, I will leave Jennifer's Instagram handle below if you want to go check her out, but thank you to Jennifer, thank you so much, and thank you all for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe, but thank you and goodbye.